Um, so, actually, when I first filled out this form, uh, I, you know, we were put in the group of free courses, but I kind of had in mind uh, free PDCs because they're a much more extensive version of the courses. So, uh, the things that we wrote here are an extension of open workshops, which are these free open workshops, and this is hopefully specifically to a more structured, more time in intensive uh, thing for the teacher. Uh, so I guess the number one thing that was written uh, here is, you know, obviously building on the fact that nothing is actually free. Uh, there's no such thing as free. Someone or something spends energy doing or creating that what you use. Uh, so it's better to use the term money free. Uh, especially in PDCs. Uh, it's a great tool for community building because it's an opportunity for people to uh, negotiate barters uh, or something else. Uh, now, in Bulgaria, we have uh, the first time a uh, free PDC. Uh, and this is because of the UPC. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, and the UPC is the common goal that we're all working towards. So we are really diligent to be reminding our students that uh, they're getting this course at a value of 500 to 1,000 euros, and they're getting it for free. So Misha and I make sure to kind of slip it in there almost uh, quite frequently in our interactions with our students is that they're getting a lot of value for things that people pay a lot of money for otherwise. Uh, they're getting not only entrance to UPC, PT stuff, but also uh, a PDC certificate, which is very valuable. Um, as a teacher, how to approach a free PDC. Uh, some of the advice that was uh, gathered was that the teacher's needs are actually number one in this deal. Uh, student needs come second. And this is because the teacher is the one who's giving a lot of time. So you have to respect yourself. The initiator and organizer must not go hungry. So you either have to ensure yourself other sources of income um, or, and make sure that you're really ready to take this on uh, financially. Um, students uh, willing to take a free course are abundant, while teachers willing to give a free course are an endangered species. <laughs> so fostering the teacher satisfaction in this deal is very, very important. You yourself as the initiator, you are a very important, uh, you must be happy with the deal. Um, so yeah, they're not actually free. Uh, so right now in Bulgaria, we're arranging a, an exchange. Uh, with UPC time and the PDC, and this is great because we're stacking functions, we're team building, our volunteers, and it just, it just works really well. Uh, next year we won't have the UPC, but we want to continue this tradition. So maybe we'll come up with some sort of barter system or direct exchange or even a local currency for the PDC. So like a PDC currency of time and energy that people spend on doing stuff for each other. Uh, so again, another community building tool. Uh, it's important to include, to, uh, it's my, this is just an opinion, uh, it's important to include the option of payment for those who can pay. So even though you are offering a, a PDC for free, don't be an extremist about it. Don't refuse payment. <laughs> if somebody says, I'm willing to give you, you know, this amount of money, it's fine. Be like, oh, sure. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it's, uh, and another uh, challenge, yeah, so, hold on. Yeah, uh, in this case, you also must be very strict with your participants as a teacher. You must really expect them to say they're going to do what they're going to do for giving time. Because when people say, I'm not going to give money, I'm going to give time, that's an opportunity for a lot of conflict and a lot of people not fulfilling their word. Uh, I don't know what the situation is uh, in here, but in Bulgaria, this is massive. Um, and payment also, the good thing about payment is it creates, a, it creates a commitment system. If somebody pays for a PDC, then they're committed to the PDC. If they're not paying for the PDC, there's a danger of them flaking out. Um, this uh, I've experienced myself. Uh, so how do you do that? Um, usually, uh, basically, you make have deep, really go ensure into depth about what these people can sacrifice for payment. Uh, it's a great community building tool, and suddenly people become. If if you build a good community and you have people like each other and have a willingness to see and spend time at this PDC and take the most out of it, 
then mm -hmm. that will keep them committed. So it's the it's these invisible social bonds that keep people, you know, um, glued together. And another thing that why another reason why I want to talk about the PDC specifically is the certificate itself is uh, something that motivates someone to be committed. So they want that certificate. They want to know that they're a certified permaculture designer. So that in itself should foster the commitment that you would otherwise get from um, a free course. So maybe in, in terms of comparing free courses that aren't PDCs and free courses that are PDCs, the PDC certificate itself is a good commitment tool. It's a good tool, it's a good common goal for everybody. Where when you lack that certificate or you lack that structure, it might be a little trickier to, uh, to, 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 to have people stay, I guess. Um, I guess that's it. Oh yeah, and most important thing is if your PDC is free as a teacher, it doesn't matter, don't get lazy. Keep the quality high. So don't tell yourself, okay, I'm not making money on this, I'm keeping this free. You know, no, th th that doesn't mean that uh, your, uh, the quality of what you give is what, you know, is sacrificed. That you should always keep that up there. It's basically an ethic, I guess. So, okay, that's it. Thank you. Oh.